Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt with the uh, CASSP tip. And uh, this time I want to address uh, uh, a few words, and I'm going to start with polyinstantiation that mean different things depending on the context of the question. So it's not like this is a mathematical question. How many bits are in a uh, MAC address? There's one answer to that. But what does polyinstantiation mean? Well, it can mean a lot of things. Poly just means multiple and instances. Instances of what? So if you look this word up in uh, the uh, Wikipedia, uh, you'll, you'll find that they have three basic uh, definitions that are very useful for us. I find that most CISSP candidates are familiar with two, but they don't realize number one, the, the primary use of this in my mind, and it is the number one uh, listing in Wikipedia, is actually have multiple instances of a program. So in my operating system, I can make sure that if I have an instance of Word and you're loading in a, uh, a secret document and I'm going to uh, want to process a um, unclassified, I don't put it in the same instance. I would be like mixing these documents in the same hotel room. You know, I don't want that to happen. So I create a new memory address space and I have multiple instances of the program to allow me to process different files that are different classifications. Um, the, the one that most people seem to know, and it's kind of weird to me, but I know it's very usable in, in some scenarios in a, in a warlike environment, I guess, and a uh, highly competitive environment where you, you actually don't just want to you know, keep your, your social security number secret. You actually want people to think they know it. You're going to lie to them. So if you look up Bob and you have top secret clearance, you might see the truth about Bob. But if you, you know, he's really 33 years old. And if you didn't, you know, you, you suppress the cell. No, you can't see that. But here, no, we're going to actually lie to them. We're going to create a separate instance of that record. But this time, it doesn't really have the real data. That's the one I get, I find most CISPs are looking for when they take their test. And that answer, they do have a question where it does apply to databases, but I know they have a question that applies to at least operating systems too. I get students all the time that say, the right answer didn't seem to be there. And neither of these things, no, no, Larry, that wasn't, it, the context was more about encryption. Oh, well, that generally refers to then uh, having multiple instances of a key. So when you have a, a, a private public key pair to authenticate somebody, you know, I want to make sure that uh, um, Larry's really Larry, he has his private key, there's only one instance of that. Public key can go out everywhere. But when you encrypt data, you actually don't use asymmetric encryption, right? If you're not familiar, we use private keys to encrypt uh, hashes. That's how you sign something. We use public keys to encrypt session keys. Right, to do key agreement. We don't encrypt data asymmetrically. So depending on how they word it. So if the question comes in in the form of which would uh, allow an application to perform multi-level processing, so Microsoft Word can process whatever a, a classified document and a, a unclassified, the operating system would be required to implement polyinstantiation. Um, if it's in the context of databases, then you might say something like, which of the following is required for a single object? In this case, the record is an object to have multiple stored classifications. Yeah, I'm gonna store it once uh, with the real data, but I'm gonna store it again. I'm gonna have another instance of this record with a cover story. And then if it comes in the form of, uh, neither of those answers seem applied, uh, then which of the following would be required for authentication keys to allow OAuth to function? That's our Auth Z for the most part, right? How, how does this API get authorization to make these changes? Uh, if OpenID or any other public key system is not implemented. Well, if you're not familiar, I highly suggest you do get familiar with how OAuth is supposed to authenticate with OpenID using PKI certificates, but that's not how most people are still doing it. They're mostly doing pre-shared key which would basically say it's pre-shared. It must have multiple of them. And there are, mul there are multiple instances. I hope that helps you. So when you're taking your test, you go, oh, I don't see the right words can be used differently. And I'll, I'm going to do a few of these this year. All right. So uh, just a little advertising for me. Please sign up. It makes my wife impressed when I come home with money and stuff like that. But other than that, thank you so much. I hope this helps anybody. May you all live long and prosper.